This week, we got some news about the PSVR 2, we got some leaks, we got a new free-to-play game, there's a whole bunch of news, so let's just hop right into it. Together, as a people, and... Take it out! Welcome to another Sensational Sunday. I'm Mike and I am here to talk about the gaming news. But before we hop into that, I did skip last Thursday's video. I actually went to the funeral for my friend on Tuesday, so I didn't know how I was going to be feeling. So I went ahead ahead of time. If you watched last week's news video, and said I probably wasn't going to have a video on Thursday. So that was the reason why. And I also mentioned that I was going to be starting an Apple channel. So that channel is up now. I don't have any videos on it, but it's called Mike X Apple. That's going to be in the description. If you do want to go there and subscribe, I will have some unboxing videos up there soon. And it's basically going to be like the Apple news where I just talk everything Apple. So the Apple stuff's going to be gone from this channel so I can focus on gaming and tech related products. Also, someone did ask me last week when I was going to be doing my Steam Deck versus GPD Win 3 comparison. And that is coming on Thursday. So that's the updates I have for right now. It's been a little bit slow lately with everything going on. So thank you for your patience. Now we can hop into the gaming news. And let's start out with the PSVR 2. So everything on paper has looked really good with the PSVR 2. Press are getting their hands on it now and trying it. It's probably gonna be out soon, early next year. Everything was all good, but of course, it's Sony. So everything can't be 100% good. It can't be. Sony has basically said the PSVR 1 games are not gonna be forced compatible with the PSVR 2. And this is the exact quote from PlayStation Senior Vice President of Platform Experience. I don't know how to pronounce his name, so I'm not gonna try to pronounce it. <laughs> but uh, basically they said the PSVR games are not compatible with PSVR 2 because PSVR 2 is designed to deliver a truly next generation experience. PSVR 2 has a much more advanced features like an all new controller with haptic feedback, adaptive triggers, inside out tracking, eye tracking, 3D audio coming together and 4K HDR of course. This means that developing games for PSVR 2 requires a whole different approach than the original PSVR. That's why PSVR 2 is not going to be backwards compatible with PSVR 1 games and it should seem like, you know, any reasonable person would read that and go, okay, that makes sense, but it's stupid. And I'm going to tell you why. Aside from the games that were exclusive on PlayStation, all the games that are on PSVR were also on PC. A lot of PC games don't have eye tracking or whatever, but they have the same versions of those games with updated controls similar to what the PSVR 2 already has. Because basically the PSVR 2 controllers are the same as like the Oculus Quest controllers. So there's already versions of these games with updated controls that use inside out tracking. Now I understand that I'll put that back on the developer to update those games to work with PSVR 2. Or the other option is Sony could have set up something like a baseline emulation type thing that would basically emulate the PSVR 1 environment with the PSVR 2 and kind of let you use the updated controllers, just kind of restrict the buttons. I understand the move controllers are kind of weird, but they really don't have that many buttons. So it doesn't seem like it'd be that hard to do if Sony wanted to take that approach themselves without actually having the developers go back and re-release the games. But it seems like they're just not doing anything. It seems like this shouldn't be that difficult. And the reason I'm complaining about it is I do have a PSVR 1, but you gotta go through all this rigmarole to hook it up to a PlayStation 5 and use that stupid camera adapter and use the original camera and all this stuff that's just like, I don't wanna be inconvenienced just to play older VR games. Cause it's not like if I'm on PC and I got a new headset, it just works. Like I can play most of these games with any headsets aside from the games that are exclusive to Oculus and there's even workarounds for that. From my standpoint, I feel like Sony is making an excuse again as they've always done with stuff related to backwards compatibility and they don't want to put in the time and work to make it work. It's not like there are that many PSVR games anyway where it would take that much more time to make them work with the new headset and it sucks for people that only have a PS5 because I've already sold my PS4 and even if I had a PS4, that's still a lot of stuff to hook up just to go back and play those old PSVR games. And then there's also games like Resident Evil 7, which literally use a controller, use a PS4 controller. So you can't make that work with the PSVR 2. I don't know. I feel like they're making excuses. That's just me personally. Yes, I'm being a little bit hard on them, but it's just over and over again, Sony has shown that they don't care about backwards compatibility. But let's move on from that and let's talk about a free game, something that'll cheer us up. Sims 4. This game is old. It's old and crusty at this point. It's so popular, it's not, it's not that crusty, but it's eight years old and it's been ridiculously cheap. Like it's been to the point where you can pick it up for $5 
if you have Game Pass, you have it. Like, it's just out there. But they're officially making it free to play as of October 18th. If you buy the game before that, which I already bought the game, you will get an extra pack, some kind of deluxe pack or something like that that comes with some free items. But essentially, the base game is free, and it makes a lot of sense because The Sims at this point is all about buying the DLC. That's what it's always kind of been about. Like you buy the base game, and then they add a lot to it with the DLC. So if you really don't get the DLC, you're missing out on a lot of the added features and bonuses. So making the base game free will probably bring in some new people and probably increase sales of their DLC. So it kind of makes sense at this point for them to make it free to play. And with the game being almost eight years old, I'm wondering when The Sims 5 is gonna come out because it's an old game, y'all. And I really want a new game. I never got into The Sims 4 because when we went from three where you could literally zoom out and go anywhere in the neighborhood and you didn't have to load to four where they went back on that, it, it just broke me. That game just never clicked with me for that reason. So. I'm really hoping they do a Sims 5 where they bring back that ability where you could just zoom out. You don't have to load to go to another area. Of course, if they did a Sims 5, that would give them a chance to sell another game at $60. And then on top of that, DLC for that game, and they pretty much get to start over again. So this could be a sign that Sims 5 is coming soon, or this could just be a sign that they just plan on continuing Sims 4 support and they want to sell more DLC for it. So we'll see what happens with the Sims, but I'm hoping for a new game soon. Now that we had our bad news, some good news, Let's hop over to the leak section. So we got a couple leaks to talk about. I'm gonna start with the VR one. So the Meta Quest Pro has leaked and in Apple fashion, it got left in a hotel room. If you remember back the iPhone 4, it got left in a bar. Someone left an engineering sample of basically the Meta Quest Pro packaging and everything up there. It even says engineering sample on it. So it's expected to launch next month but yeah we got a little early preview of it there's pictures of it i think it looks kind of ugly to be honest especially in comparison to the regular quest but with this being a more powerful headset and it probably being standalone as well they had to make it bigger to me it looks kind of like something from the late 90s i'm excited to see what it can do when they announce it but yeah it looks like we got the up and down and all around there's even a little video of the person taking it out and showing off the controllers interestingly enough it didn't have the little ring around the controllers like the oculus quest that does finger tracking so i'm interested to see what the new controller tech is going to be for this as well but uh yeah we got the full shebang bang speaking of full shebang bangs we also got to look at what nvidia is rumored to announce on september 20th which is the new rtx cards the 40 series so there's been a leak of an rtx 4090 out there in the wild like showing it in a computer and showing the box art for it yeah it's kind of a spoiler i mean we kind of expected it anyway it's been two years since the 30 series launch that's usually when they refresh to line up but i guess we kind of have a spoiler what they're probably going to announce on the 20th so there it is it's out there the 4090 we knew it was coming so it's not really that surprising but what is surprising is our final story. This is actually related to the whole thing. So you're looking at that 40 series, right? And you're probably thinking like, oh, I'm gonna copy an EVGA card. Well, you ain't. You ain't copying one because EVGA is no longer making graphics cards. So yeah, this came as a shock to me. EVGA is one of those places I always recommend because I heard good things about their warranty and their support. And obviously their products are good. And also they do EVGA B stock every week where they sell refurbished products at a discount. And I literally just bought a 3070 last week, I'm doing an exchange for a friend to get a 2060. It's a whole complicated story, but basically I bought it for a friend and he's giving me his old card so I can use it for my eGPU. But uh, yeah, I literally just bought an EVGA 3070 last week and <laughs> for this to happen is kind of crazy. But the YouTube channels Gamer Nexus and Jay's Two Cents actually broke the news. They have in-depth videos on their channels of what's going on. Those will be linked in the description of the references section, but essentially, the partnership between NVIDIA and EVGA have been bad for a long time. EVGA feels like they have been disrespected, so they're stepping away from the business, and they're not gonna be making Intel or AMD cards either. They're just not making graphics cards at all anymore. They do sell power supplies and motherboards and a few other products, so they're still gonna continue to make those products. They're just not making graphics cards anymore. And like I said, it's really shocking, and it really sucks because I really enjoyed EVGA's products from a personal standpoint. But yeah, it really is a big deal. EVGA is one of the biggest NVIDIA card makers. They are gonna continue to sell the 30 series until they run out, which they plan on being before the end of the year probably. And they're gonna continue to provide warranties for the cars that they've sold and are selling. So you can still get your hand on an EVGA card right now. They will not have any 40 series cards available. It really does suck. You know what else sucks? But I gotta bring this video to a conclusion. But let me know what you think in the comments. What do you think about the PSVR 2 not being backwards compatible with the PSVR 1 games? 
I, I rolled my eyes, I'm sorry. Are you excited for Sims 4 going free to play? What do you think about the leaked images of the MetaQuest Pro? Are you excited for the 40 series graphics cards? And are you sad about EVGA leaving the GPU market? Again, let me know and I'll be back on Thursday. But until then, if you enjoyed this video, then make sure to tell a friend, tell a coworker, like, share, and subscribe, and hit the bell notification to be notified when I drop a video. And I'll do at least two things at the same time.